Today's video is sponsored by Supermicro. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. I'm here at Computex 2025 at the Supermicro booth, and we're talking about the GB300 NBL72. Uh, right behind me is the GB200, but soon to be announced is the GB300 coming from Supermicro. Uh, let's start off uh, kind of big picture and work our way down. What exactly is the GB300 rack, and uh, what can you tell me about it? Perfect. So GB300 NBL72 will be pretty much similar to this, yep. what you see here. The key difference will be, of course, on the chip. The CPU is same. And per tray, you can simply, you know, first we can talk about the tray, the mm -hmm. compute tray. That will have two gray CPUs and four Blackwell chips. Yep. So Blackwell chips, instead of B200 here, that is going to be B300. So as far as GB300 NBL72 is concerned, so according to NVIDIA, the PS samples will be available in June. So that's what we are gearing up, and we are pretty much you know, all set. So with GB300 at a base level, what kind of memory configuration are we looking at there? So yeah, memory configuration, first of all, there is a huge improvement in terms of memory because the system is geared for a different, totally different type of um, applications environment. Right. And uh, the memory per GPU is going to be 288 gigabyte, and that is also HBM3 e-memory. Yes. So the, the combined memory at a node level, if you consider this as a node, so the combined memory is going to be 21 terabytes of HBM3 E memory. 21 terabytes per rack of per HBM3 rack E. Of HBM3 That's E. That's incredible. Per GPU, it is 288 gigabytes. Now, obviously, for each chip to communicate with that much memory, we're talking about a ton of bandwidth. Uh, what can you tell me about the chip-to-chip -chip connect and how that's a little bit different from maybe GB200? So uh, from chip to chip, it is 1,800 gigabytes per second via NB-Link. So all these chips are connected in a non-blocking architecture because of um, this, the NB-Links, and that is 1,800 gigabytes per second. One very important thing, the memory bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So memory capacity, memory bandwidth, these are the two very important things for AI workloads. So as I said earlier, the memory capacity, the combined memory capacity on this one is going to be 18, uh, 21 terabytes of HBM3 E memory. And in terms of the memory bandwidth, mm -hmm. that is going to be 576 gigabytes. Now, if we put this in terms of Hopper as far as our previous generation, what kind of uh, uplift in performance are we looking at? Huge, huge performance difference. Because first of all, this particular architecture is designed for AI factories. And for AI factories, the foundation is the reasoning model. Mm -hmm. So these systems are designed to cater to those type of applications. Number one, that is the priority here. And for that, the most important, you know, the, the measure is the tokens per second. That is what NVIDIA says, you know, TPS, tokens per second. Yeah, and, uh, Jensen with, does say that a yeah, lot. Yeah, <laughs> Jensen does say that a lot, tokens per second. So that is going to be the measure of it, yep. rather than, you know, talking about the speeds and feeds. Mm -hmm. So if you talk in terms of tokens per second, so compared to Hopper, it is going to be 10x better mm -hmm. in terms of the responsiveness and 5x better on throughput. So if you combine these two, then it is going to be 50x better than with the previous generation. So in terms of you know the performance, you yeah. can say it is 50x better than if you have an AI factory based on Hopper, mm -hmm. and if you are switching to this this Blackwell chip with this GB300 NBL72, yeah. you are going to experience up to 50x better. 50x improvements. Better. That's incredible. Now, obviously, that kind of performance improvement isn't free. What are we talking about as far as power density in a rack like this? Perfect. So that's uh, that's pretty much you know since uh, uh, you're you're here with GB200 NVL72, so that was pretty much in 125 kilowatts range, right? And this one is going to be 136 kilowatts. The reason is obvious because number one factor is going to be the GPU chip. Yep. With the previous generation, it was 1200, uh, 1200 watt TDP yep. per GPU. Now it is 1400 watts. Okay. So if you do the math, it pretty much you know goes there. Yeah, 200 watts per GPU times 72 70, GPUs in exactly, your stack. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now speaking of that much power in in the rack and making it that dense, you've got to keep all of this cool. How are we accomplishing that inside of the system like this? Wow. So that's a good question. So in this space, you know, we are always proud to say that mm -hmm. super micro is leader with liquid cooling. We did really, really big deployments. Uh, we will talk about that also. But uh, really big deployments based on liquid cooling. In fact, you know, the world's largest deployment that was based on liquid cooling. And this system is only liquid cool. It is not available with the air cool. Oh, wow. So okay. for all those type of deployments, Supermicro is the only vendor who has lots and lots of experience, the most experienced vendor in the industry right now. Yep. Right? So this is very important. So that makes us a very strong contender 
for these type of deployments. The second very important thing is that Supermicro is the only vendor who is doing from end to end. And here, let me define the ends. Yeah. The ends are from cold plate to cooling tower via CDU. Everything is from Supermicro. Excellent. Oh yeah, so you guys are providing the CDUs for yes, their vendors exactly. as well. So again, high level looking at this system, we've got 18 compute trays, we've got 72 Blackwell GPUs, we've got 36 Grace CPUs, all, in, all that's basically combined for, what, 40 terabytes of unified memory across the entire stack? Uh, yes, so the you can call it fast memory. Uh -huh. Fast memory is going to be 40 terabytes, right? But if you go, if you just want to, uh, you know, see the difference, you know, how it is, it's a unified memory. 40 yeah. terabyte is a unified memory. And that uh, consists of 25, uh, 21 terabyte of HBM3 memory that is on GPU. Mm -hmm. And then the remaining on the CPU and, and uh, that particular part, the, the, the unified memory uh -huh. that you are getting, that is uh, 40 terabytes. And that remaining 18 is LP, DDR5X, right, that, right. Is, that is what it is. Another difference you mentioned to me a little earlier on when we were having a conversation upstairs was the NV switch in infrastructure as well. Uh, you're water cooling the NV switch in here as well, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, so that's, this is a key difference between GB200, NVL72, and 300. Yeah. In 300, the NV switch, that is 100% liquid cool. Yeah. So you, you see that, okay, with each generation, there is improvement in terms of Heat, um, heat transfer. Yeah. So heat transfer is done via liquid more and more in next generation. So you see better TCO. So this rack is basically one node thanks to the unified NV switch backplane, uh, but you can cluster these out as well. Can you talk a little bit about how you would cluster these and maybe kind of what your limits of that are? Absolutely, so first of all, let me clarify one thing, that this NV switch is a confusing thing because the number of people they think that okay, you can you can scale with NV switch also, uh -huh. but these switches, NV link switches, are non-scalable switches. Gotcha. Right. So you cannot scale with. Mm -hmm. So these switches are just for this domain. Yeah. So 72 GPUs, they are connected, they are connected in a non-blocking architecture with peer-to-peer -peer communication. That is 1800 gigabytes per second. So that is for this, right? Yeah. And if you want to go beyond this, yep. then you have to go through your regular Ethernet or infinite band. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and that network has been improved dramatically. We're not talking about 400 gigabit per second anymore, individuals. Uh, we're moving to Connect X8 with 800 gigabit. Is exactly, that correct? Exactly, yeah. that is correct, that yep. is correct. And yes, of course, you can use those for your clustering. Excellent. Uh, as far as clusters, uh, you mentioned we can start with basically three in a cluster. Is there any kind of theoretical max uh, that you can scale to? Very good question. So, you know, this is what we were doing, theoretical calculation, based on theoretical, right yeah. now, because this is not released yet, GB300, right, right. NVL72. But if you go by, you know, the minimum, that is three, three nodes, basically, just like this. Okay. Three nodes put together, that will create one cluster. And for maximum, it is 6,144. 6,144 NVL72s. Yes. How many GPUs is that? So, if you do the math, it is four, uh, 442,368 uh, GPUs. So that's what we are talking about. You, you guys <laughs> at home can do the math on how much memory you can, you that can would create be. a cluster. So times 288. Yeah. Wow. Uh, now we said June as far as availability from NVIDIA for the uh, for the production samples. Yes. Uh, and, and that's when you guys are going to start putting things together, starting to validate. Yes. When you anticipate customers being able to start placing orders with you guys? So in fact, our validation will start way before that. Okay. By June, what we mean by that, if it is production sample, PS samples. Uh -huh. So PS samples, it is that, okay, it is very close to the, the final finished product. Yeah. So that's what we mean by that, and it, it will be in June. Okay, so June, we can start talking, yes, uh, yes. talking a little bit more brass stacks then. Awesome. Anything else you want to add before we go about this amazing so, looking system behind yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so so this is the whole thing. So the, the key for this particular system is that this is designed for AI factories. Yeah. And um, um, just like, you know, for AI factories, yeah. the most important thing is the tokens per second, TCPS. And with tokens per second, the quality of token, you know, at what rate the tokens are being, you know, delivered, and all this stuff that is going to play the vital role. And number of other vendors, you know, everybody is now competing on quality of token and the rate, the you know, what they are going to charge right. for, for those tokens. So that is going to be the key. Thank you so much for your time. Thank uh, you so much. Thanks for always, having me. Yeah, absolutely. And as always, I'm Jeff of Craft Computing. Uh, stay tuned to the channel for more coverage from Computex 2025. Thanks.